Um, and then before that, we used um, a program called Blackboard. And then before that, it was WebCT, which I wasn't really involved with at all. But um, then um, through that, then I actually ended up developing a, a completely online um, class, um, Herbaceous Plant Materials, that's PSC 2600, um, which went live um, er earlier this summer. So I taught it for the first time online this summer. And then it's running a second time um, in the fall right now. And um, it was actually a lot of fun, and I learned a lot, and it helped me realize um, the kinds of things that we could use this for an extension. So right now I'm building um, a Canvas course to help um, with the Master Gardener classes, um, and I'll kind of show you. Um, hopefully you'll get an idea of how that will be helpful in um, helpful to me in staying in touch with them, but also uh, making it so that it doesn't take all of my time. And then um, I've been asked uh, by Brian Higginbotham to, he, he's actually talked to me about specifically about developing an online version of the Master Gardener class, um, which I believe needs um, a lot of further discussion um, amongst um, all of the agents um, or something similar um, in the near future. So that's something that, that definitely administration is looking towards using the online platform to assist extension in a lot of um, the roles that we have. So the major objective of this, of this presentation is basically to give you ideas to plant, plant some seeds and ideas in your minds as to how Canvas can help you in, um, in your extension assignments. So the way I, I kind of thought about going about this was not really to overwhelm you with information on Canvas, but just to kind of highlight some of its possibilities and then um, kind of work with you guys if you if you want to develop something in Canvas to be kind of a liaison to help you get started and navigate through some of that and until uh, we get better support, especially until we get better support from Canvas. So the way I want to, um, to achieve this is by discussing a brief history of Canvas and then navigate, um, just show you some of the courses that I've developed using Canvas and um, share with you my ideas on how Canvas can be used in extension, and then uh, hopefully have some sort of discussion um, on how we, on how others might be able to see Canvas potentially being um, a help to them or you guys in your different counties and, and with your different programs. And if anytime you have questions, um, at this point, because I've gone to full screen with this, um, I actually can't see any of the other sites right now the way that my IVC system is a is an individual system, so I don't have a whole room. Uh, it's just on my computer in my office, and so it, it's a little bit different than the way yours is working. So hopefully, I'll be able to interface with you guys okay. Um, but so really, we kind of need to understand what is Canvas and and why are we plugging the use of this. Um, so Instructure Canvas is the online learning platform that allows for online organization of course materials and student interaction. And even more completely than that, it actually allows us to build completely online classrooms and, and class environments. So Instructure is the name of the company that developed the learning management system. So Canvas is called an LMS or learning, ma learning management system. And so Instructure developed this um, system and they call it Canvas. Now Instructure happens to be based in Salt Lake City, um, although that was, that was not really a major criteria in its um, implementation um, here in Utah, but it is the LMS provider for all higher ed institutions in Utah. So all nine state-run colleges and, and universities use um, Canvas. And so the Board of Regents actually signed a contract with Canvas to be this um, LMS provider. So, um, hey, Mike, this is Dean. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Dean. I'm not, I'm not seeing the slides advance. Am I the only one? Um, I just advanced. Did that not happen? No. No, it's frozen. We, we just see the view of inside PowerPoint. We're not seeing. Oh, there you go. Uh, okay. I've got the wide canvas now, too. Thank you. Okay, sorry. I'll just leave it. I know this isn't full screen. But you guys can see see everything this way. I apologize for that. So um, it's good to know how this is and isn't working. So you'll see a little bit of the, the other stuff. 
Is that is that okay? Can you guys see that pretty good? Yeah, we can see that. It's a little small, but yeah. Um, I, I let me see here. So I can minimize that a little bit. Is that any better? A little bit. But yeah, that'll, sorry work, that'll that. work, Mike. So a snag that I'll have to figure out. That's fine. Okay. So, um, so Canvas um, has been used in the credit course system at Utah State. Um, since the summer of 2012. It officially went to adoption um, at the beginning of 2012 in January, but it took about six months for the university to, to completely switch over. And then, um, so the university was using Blackboard, uh, another learning management system uh, before that, and then WebCT uh, prior to that. So, uh, and then the university decided to not use Canvas or to use Canvas over these other these other types of programs um, because of its ability to um, connect with things like social media, Google Docs, uh, and a whole bunch of other um, social media and um, multimedia technologies that the other systems were just way outdated on. So Canvas is powerful in its ability to incorporate uh, multimedia such as video and audio, which lends obviously its necessity to having um, online class content um, you can make, um, it allows for exams, quizzes, peer reviews, connectivity to social networking, class discussions, and allows you to upload files, media, um, assignments, be uploaded both ways. So um, I'll get into that a little bit um, when I show you some actual classroom stuff. Um, but I'll, it allows full interaction between student and instructor um, in, a, in, in any way that you can think of, you can pretty much do it, whether you want to do a file, um, you want to send a, a student a, a, a voice message, a video um, reply, any of those things, you can do that fairly easily. And it's um, fairly user friendly and doesn't require any programming knowledge to create or maintain courses. And that's a huge thing right there. Um, it does allow you to um, code in HTML if you want to do that, if you know how to do that, but you don't have to do that at all. Um, I can advance. Okay, so what's the relevance of Canvas to Extension? Well, um, historically, learning management systems have only been used in credit-based courses, and um, I don't think that's fair. I don't think that's right. I think that um, Extension should be using this um, a lot, um, especially as our budgets become more challenged and we have to um, look at more innovative ways to reach a target audience. And, and duplicate ourselves without duplicating um, the staff. So um, the potential, I, I think the potential is huge for Extension to use these tools to better fulfill its mi mission of outreach. So um, the good thing about this too is that many people now just in the public are very comfortable working in a computer environment, learning in some way through a computer environment. So when I first started using Blackboard a few years ago, um, it was really a challenge to get students to log into it, get comfortable with it, and actually use it as a platform for exchanging information. Um, but now um, we find that students are actually expecting this um, kind of platform of uh, information exchange. And um, most people, even, even many, many older people, are actually getting familiar with this and very comfortable with using this technology. So that still may be a concern um, for some programs, but um, over time, in, in my opinion, and based on my experience, I think we'll actually see um, those concerns gradually um, resolving themselves as the computer technology becomes even more um, uh, easier to use and people become more comfortable using it. So I think this is a great opportunity for Extension to be able to use Canvas um, as a tool to help us be more effective. So either through development of online, entire online training for certain um, types of courses or, or um, just as a support to other courses um, that we might teach face-to-face -face or programs that, that we may do face-to-face. -face. And it also opens up the opportunity for us to do combinations of both. 
Um, for example, some of the classes that um, that we used to that I used to work with would be partly online, and then would be partly live. So you you, you could schedule um, two or three workshops during the course of a program, and then use Canvas um, to um, upload some videos and some lectures, those kind of things, or workshops, whatever um, demonstrations, whatever you wanted to do. Um, to support the class that way as well. So you wouldn't, may not necessarily have to go face to face all the time. And, and then um, another thing that I did with one particular class was that um, we're teaching it along the Wasatch Front through broadcast, um, which you could do online as well. You just say once, once during the semester, we actually are going to meet in at this location, we're going to have a field day, um, demonstration day. And then all the other classes then um, were online. So you still can have that face-to-face -face interaction um, uh, on a more limited basis, um, but you wouldn't be required to go face-to-face -to, -face to all those sites. So there's, there's just lots of possibilities, I think, on ways that this could be used. Um, so there's lots of support available for Canvas. And right now, um, we still haven't got it worked out exactly how Extension is going to fit into this. Um, support system because um, as of right now looking at the second bullet right here as of right now there's not any staff devoted to working um, with extension so um, extension really hasn't utilized canvas before or any of the um, learning management system platforms before that um, I've worked with Tyler Clare um, at City so the USU um, Center for Innovative Design and Instruction um, with the acronym CITI is responsible for course development help and, and they also insta instigate the creation of a course. So their staff is highly trained in how to build a course online and, and can help f facilitate in getting multimedia presentations and stuff online as well. Um, so, um, so I know um, that through Diane, um, and um, Diane Reese and Brian Higginbotham, um, I talked to them about about this, and they actually contacted um, Tyler Clare um, over at City, and he's been support, supporting me in getting um, classes online for my master gardeners. Um, and so right now he's kind of the only one that I know of um, to help us with extension over there. Although uh, others would probably help us as well. Uh, so I think we can and should change this. I think extension should be a major player in the use of Canvas online uh, for, for the university. And um, as such, uh, perhaps it will develop into something that we'll need to help them pay for. Um, but at this point in time, um, I just I kind of want to get this out there and help um, make extension have a better reach. Now, there's, there's lots of support on, online available at um, canvas.usu.edu. Uh, slash support and then they have video clips and how to's and, and all kinds of information on how to do things in canvas everything from grading to uploading files and so I'll show you that page as well when we get to that point so um, what I wanted to do now is um, kind of give you an overview of, of canvas and uh, so I want to switch screens and and show you some of the coursework I've done in canvas um, but just remember that the things I'm going to show you um, are content that was important for me in the particular class that I was teaching, and it may or may not be appropriate for you. Like, for example, a lot of the grading and the quizzing, that may not be appropriate for a lot of the programs that we do. Um, uh, and then also I had a lot of help from instructional designers um, at USU to help get some of the more technical things done uh, as well, because I'm not a programmer. so. Um, but are there any questions before I switch over um, to the other screen? Anybody have hey, any Mike, questions? Hey, yeah, go ahead. How accessible is this to just anybody that's out there? Do they have to sign up for something, or can you set something up that could be accessed nationwide? Yeah, it can be accessed. Um, there's different ways it can be implemented. Um, by default, um, Canvas courses are, are closed. Um, they, they, they have, users have to basically be in the university system in some way. Um, but I know that if we were to work through the right channels, we could, we could get it to, to be national. 
Um, and, and actually, it can be national now. Um, and I, one of the biggest questions that I've gotten so far um, from people about using Canvas um, is that don't you have to have an A number to, to use Canvas? And this, the answer is no, um, you don't. That's how my students got into the classes um, because they were tied to their A number when they registered. But um, really all we need to um, uh, admit students into a particular course or online section with Canvas is their email. And um, once we have an email address for them, um, we can actually go in um, through the course page that, that we have for Canvas and, and we go to an add, an add um, person, add student module, and if we enter their, add, their email in there, it will send them an email that will give them information on how to log in and create a username and password if they don't already have one. And then that will give them access to that course. So um, we, if we collected a, an, e an email then from a national audience, then, then we could add them to the course. And so we can also take them out. out. We can close a course. Um, so like I'm going to do with Master Gardeners this year is uh, I'm going to be putting some videos on there and some fact sheets and, and schedules and discussion groups and everything like that and announcements. And that's how I may plan to mainly communicate with my Master Gardeners. Um, but at the end of the year, um, I want to I want to close that class down, um, and I don't want to keep adding students to that same section indefinitely every year. So what I'll do is I'll copy that course to a new Master Gardener, Utah County Master Gardener course for for uh, uh, 2015, and we'll start with a new group in there. Um, but um, we'll kind of iron out all all the kinks and stuff that may happen if people lose access to their to their old um, system. We can actually let them have access as long as, as, long as they want. So um, it's really, really pretty flexible. And I don't know, does that, is that the long answer to your question, Dean? That's good, thanks. Okay, any other questions? Okay, I'm going to switch over to um, just just online. So I've just logged in to my um, Canvas online. I can find it. Okay, can everybody see that reasonably well? Is that large enough? Yeah, looks good. It's okay. Okay, so this is just, um, this is my summer um, class for my um, annual and perennial plant materials. And so this is what, um, I, I spent the last two years building this before we launched it in summer. And um, it took a long time because of the multimedia content that we had to develop for this. Uh, there's, um, I think, something like a thousand pictures and stuff like that that we had to put on there for the, all these plants. Um, and I'm not showing you the current version because um, there's ongoing announcements and discussions and stuff with that and grades and stuff, so I don't want to get into that. So, um, so I've got my previous one up there. So what I did for this year is I copied the course into, into a new section, and then the students get added to that um, automatically as they register. So um, this is our home screen um, for the class here. And I had some help from the instructional designers to, to develop the graphic and, and a little bit more of a, of a nice outlay. Um, and then I'll show you the Master Gardener one um, that I've created right here. Um, a little less fancy. Um, I may get into the programming a little bit more to figure out how to add a nice background and stuff to that. But honestly, to me, that's secondary importance. The first one is to get the information up there in a in a concise uh, in a concise way. So um, back to my annuals and perennial plant materials class. Um, really, um, what I've done with this class is you can see that I've broken it down into units, and um, then under each unit there's sections with um, uh, lectures, um, their plant lists, their practice quiz, and their and their quiz. And I'll just show you what all those are. So you can kind of see um, what we had to do um, to put this all together. Um, and it does take a little while to load, depending on um, how heavy Canvas is being used. Because remember, 
This is coming from the, the, the servers are managed by UEN, the Utah Education Network. And sometimes with nine institutions drawing on those servers, it can take a little, a few seconds to upload or, or download a page. Um, so uh, here I put, um, so here's um, a lecture video. These are only about 20 minutes long. That seems to be any longer than that. We tend to lose people. Um, and then I posted the lecture notes up here um, as well. So I'm just my PowerPoint notes for them to follow along with um, if they like. So it gives them the option here in this case of um, actually just doing it on screen like this um, or actually being able to view it in a completely new window um, and going full screen with that view. So, but again, notice that there is a little bit of a lag time there. And now it's just asking me, do I want to open it with Adobe Acrobat? whatever, because these files um, are all PDFs. So um, anyway, um, that, that's how we can uh, get those notes up there um, or documents in, in any way. And then we can minimize that file preview again. Um, and then with the lecture video, it's kind of the same thing. It will open it up in that current page or they can open it up in another page uh, as well. So, um, there's a number of different ways we can get uh, multimedia on Canvas. And um, one of the ways is um, that this seems to be um, probably the easiest way is to actually, um, you know, if you've got a PowerPoint built and you're wanting to um, just record yourself, um, it's actually pretty easy to um, use a program, as a piece of software that the university has a license to it costs like $20 to install it on your machine, uh, and that program is called um, Camtasia. And um, Camtasia um, integrates into PowerPoint and a number of, of other software programs and will allow you to record the screen and record the audio so that they're matched together. And so, um, so for these particular videos, and it's, it's still loading, and so I, um, I'm not going to play it yet, but... Um, what I did with these was actually um, kind of um, scripted out what I wanted to say. Whoops, I guess it's not going to do that. And then um, went through Camtasia and started playing, going through my PowerPoint and, and having a microphone and basically then just, um, just talked and did my lectures basically from my office. Now, um, up, in, up in Logan, they have... Um, sound studios where you can go into and record these. If you have a really nice atmosphere um, and really good microphones, you can go and do that as well, but you don't have to. Is there any questions? Is there a question? Okay. So I, somebody just has an open mic. Okay. I think Cash has an open mic. Okay, thanks. That's better. No, there's still open mic somewhere, but that's okay. I think I can still do this. Um, so one of the um, more powerful things um, that Canvas allows us to do is to, is to create quizzing. So I know this is a concern. Um, for example, if we wanted to offer a food safety certification or something like that, then um, we can do we can do quizzes and, and exams, and they can be um, fully proctored. So um, what I've done with my classes is that th this particular quiz that I've got up here right now um, is um, so it's showing the the instructor side of it. But you can see that, um, so we, we actually built these questions. We actually built these questions um, and to create a random quiz each time a student comes in to take a quiz, um, they get a different quiz. So it's still got an open mic. I think it's cash. Can you guys check your mics in, in cash?
So in this particular type of quiz, um, students will, it, it, it's a practice quiz, they can take it as many times as they want, but they'll never have the same quiz twice. Um, so we built a pool of questions that, um, that automatically selects, randomly selects, uh, 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 as well as with the um, correct answer. Uh, so for some of these, we also then had identification pictures where they had to select the appropriate scientific name for the plants that, that are pictured. And again, um, the pictures st stay the same, um, but out of out of a plant list of 15 or so each week, the, the program, the about five of those. So it very, becomes very difficult then for students to try and cheat because they only have, a, they have a unique quiz to them. So if they wanna go back in and look at that quiz later on, or if I need to go in and look at that quiz, I can see the exact quiz that they took, but, um, the other students will have a completely uh, different quiz. So there's there's that kind of functionality. So I'm thinking that if we were to use this for something like food safety or uh, some other kind of certification program uh, like that, um, where we needed to have exams taken and graded and proctored, um, Canvas can handle all of that. And um, with all of the USU um, RCDE centers that are around and even the extension sites, um, they can proctor these exams too. So uh, one thing that I did, and I'll, I'll show you this, um, that we do a lot, is when we go to um, exams. No, okay. I can get it to go here to exams. Okay. We still got an open mic somewhere. I'm getting people talking. Okay. Sorry about that. That's all right. Thanks. So you can see, I'm just going to show up a final exam, pull up a final exam that's here. And um, before it just said not connected, I heard that was So I'll see the full quiz. Cash there. County, could you mute, mute your microphone, please? I don't, I don't know if they can hear us, Scott. I'm actually going to switch over to. Um, I'm actually going to switch over to my current class. I, I'm going to have to do that because of the limitations on a closed class. It won't let me look um, and show you uh, some of the quizzing that we can do um, in a closed course. So um, one of the po real powerful things about this is that for this particular class, I actually let the students, um, on their honor, take the, the the weekly quizzes that they have to take. Um, but for the exams, they have to go into a salt, like to the Salt Lake Center or the Tooele Center or wherever it is and have those exams proctored. Um, and so they're not allowed to take, you know, the, any materials in with them at all. Uh, and so what we can do then with these things is um, uh, I can set all kinds of parameters with these exams, um, like how long, a time limit on how long they have to take the exam. Um, can they view their responses? Can they take it more than once? Uh, but the most important thing here that I wanted to say is that they, they um, are able, I'm able to assign it an access code. And I, I go into a, um, a part of the university's um, RCDE system um, that, that we can, uh, should be able to get adapted for extension soon um, to where um, I enter this code and I send that out to all the TAs in the testing centers at all the USU um, testing centers in, in the state. And um, so that shows up then on their calendar. I'd say this is the exam and when it's offered, and this is the password. So when a student comes in to the testing center to take this exam, the proctor pulls up the password, goes in, uh, that student logs into their Canvas, their, their Canvas account, the TA enters this access code, and the student has an hour to take it as soon as they begin that exam. Um, and so, um, 
that then gives us um, pretty much uh, complete control over exams if we want to have them that way. So if we need to do a certification that has to be proctored, the system's already built to handle that. We don't have to, we don't really have to do anything special to handle that, just learn um, how to use that. Are there any questions um, or ideas on, on, on this? From anybody. Am I still coming out okay as far as volume? Looks like Cash may not be able to get us in very well. So uh, then I, I also set a due date for this for this exam, um, when it's available from when they can start taking it. So in this particular um, case, um, they, they were able to, to start taking this exam on September 30th at 8 a.m. and it closed October 4th at 10 p.m. when the testing centers are closed. And so, um, and then um, it says here until um, October 4th. So what that means is that if I, if I wanted to let students still take the exam after the due date for a penalty, um, I could extend that um, another week if I wanted to um, or however many days I want. Um, Mike? Yeah, go ahead. So this is, we just figured out how to turn on the mic thing, so this is okay. about five minutes ago. Okay. Um, you were talking about uploading videos and, and the class thing, you know, I'm starting to try to fit this together with extension. And not so much the, well, it could be the quiz, but, you know, a class, a certification like Master Gardeners or, or pruning or a, a grafting or something, um, what you're telling me is that we could video some of this stuff and have, okay, I'm going to use Master Gardeners, for example. We teach a two-hour class, but then the students have to go back and watch a one-hour video or, you know, 10-minute video or something to answer questions. And that could be uniform throughout the whole Wasatch Front. That thing's kind of possible. Oh, absolutely. We can all get on it, and the video would be embedded in there with the questions if we wanted to ask them questions, and it would be more uniform as far as, you know, you would still have the training. I'm just, I'm just thinking this through in my mind about how to adapt what you're telling me to what we do. Does that so make any sense? My, my opinion is instead of having this as Master Gardener Forum, it could be a whole new gardening class forum for people. Because Master Gardeners is a volunteer thing. And it's, it's going to be hard to get volunteerism out of an online course. Yeah, but, it, but, but not the whole course. What Mike was saying is that you, you could do right. just parts of it. that they would. So you could train them. Correct me if I'm wrong, Mike. You could train them, and then they have a week to watch the video and take a little quiz or something. Yeah. Is that right? Absolutely. Yeah, um, exactly. And and there's just anything we, pretty much anything we think of, we can probably do it. However we want to do it, we can probably do it in Canvas. The, the technology is good enough that, that we can do it. So the way I'm thinking about using Canvas for Master Gardeners is, is pretty much that same thing, is that I'm just using Canvas as a supplement to the, to the live class that I'm going to teach at Thanksgiving Point. So Dennis Hincamp um, has been in touch with me, and I've actually ordered um, a little bit of recording equipment. Um, I'm actually going to Camtasia record um, as many as I can of the Master Gardener class that I will be at uh, here at Thanksgiving Point or wherever. And then I want to look at putting portions or even all of those online as a supplement to those for students who want to go back and review. And then, then of course, um, Brian's interested, and I think I talked to JD about this, Brian's interested in, Brian Higginbotham's interested in putting a whole entire Master Gardener certification course online, and I know there's some challenges with that, um, that, that we got to figure out what we're going to do with that, but, but administration is definitely pushing for us to use these tools um, to, to enhance our offerings, whether it be completely online or a hybrid system, which is what Jerry and I are talking about with Master Gardeners. So, um, so yeah, Jerry, we, we can film something and we can have it go to um, every Master Gardener 
um, class. It could be uniform along the Wasatch Front. Um, each county could do their own. We could copy and paste things um, from, you know, so different counties can customize a little bit if they want to. Uh, there's a million ways we could do it. The hardest part really becomes um, what do we want to do? Uh, because pretty much with the software, we can probably do almost anything. So, okay. but, um, and so, yeah, I just, I just think this, this, this is obviously master gardeners is something that we, that we do, but I know that, um, that those, the, the FCS, um, group, um, I'm going to be talking to them at four o'clock today because they're having their big retreat meeting here at Thanksgiving Point. So I'm just going to go across campus and, and talk to them live about this. But I see a lot of possibilities for them as well. Um, I know just in food safety and in some of the teacher certifications and some other things that they do um, where they're stretched really thin um, is, is actually uh, putting their course online and then um, setting up a course um, maybe for each school or whatever they need to teach that at. And then they can um, actually then um, have one or two people just monitor those courses and the discussions and the questions that come in. And instead of having to send a live person to, to, to every school that's going to be doing uh, that particular program. And so basically then it allows one agent or, or some st couple of staff the ability to manage maybe dozens of classes um, with proctored exams and those kind of things. Whereas they, they would um, be using all their time to go traveling around and doing these classes live. So especially if, if it's all pre-recorded. So the beauty of my online class was that it took me two years to develop, um, to get all the multimedia materials together that I wanted, to record the videos, get all the plant pictures and stuff, which was, which was a pretty significant investment in time. But now that it's built, all I have to do is go in and periodically do some updates and change plant pictures out. And within a few minutes, I can update the class. I don't have to rebuild the whole thing. I can copy and paste it. I can change out one 20-minute lecture at a time, um, and and that's built. And so two years upfront investment in this particular case. I don't want to scare you because um, in some cases it may only be um, a few months, or you just develop it as you go along. Um, so there is a learning curve for this, and there is an upfront investment in time for sure. There is. But the, the dividends from, from that duplication is, is pretty tremendous. We, we can earn that or, or reap that investment back in time. We should be able to reap that back uh, many times over in the course of months and years that, that we've built after we've built a program that's a quality program and is online. So anyway, that's kind of a rant, I know. But I'm just excited about this. I really want to see this work. I really want to help anybody that um, wants to wants to implement this and at least try it out with a with a, a class or something and see um, if it works and so I'm really piloting this with master gardeners this next year um, in here in Utah County and uh, it's, it's not the answer or the cure-all for everything but it but it's a sure powerful way I think to get our voice out there a little bit better so um, yeah any other questions Mike, I um, am just curious if you have any sort of experience um, working with this with kind of older clientele that maybe are a little bit not um, as quite as technologically savvy and um, kind of how they did with it. Um, yeah, um, yeah, a little bit. Um, I, I always worked with non-traditional students, and so um, a lot of them are older. Um, it's not going to be the same demographic as um, like with a typical master gardener group, probably where they're, they tend to be even a little older yet. Um, but um, what, what, I'm, what I'm noticing is that um, e even a lot of people that I've had, uh, master gardeners that I, that I have gotten to know down here in Utah County, mo most of them are actually um, quite computer savvy. So um, I'm actually seeing a, a decline in the resistance of people to use this kind of platform. It's not, it's not there. I think that'll get better over time. I think, as I said, at the, kind of near the beginning, that those problems do exist. Those technological barriers do exist. Um, and um, there's a lot of support for them. Um, and that actually kind of um, dovetails into kind of the last part of what I had planned to talk about, and that is kind of getting into the support. 
um, what exists for support. How do we, as instructors, uh, course um, builders, how do we want to, how are we going to learn how to use this? And then from the student side, how can they get help for it? So yeah, um, Katie, there's a, there is going to be a learning gap and, and there's definitely a learning curve there. Um, but um, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing that in my experience that that, that, that gap is closing rapidly um, as this technology becomes more mainstream. And like I said, with, with a lot of uh, the students that I had um, from a few years ago, nobody wanted to use it to where now they expect it, at least some portion of the class to be online. Um, whether it's just being able to interact and, and post assignments and discussions and get class notes and those kind of things to a completely fully online class. They're, they're expecting some sort of <clears throat> online backup um, or online component to their classes. So um, it's just a matter of, um, th this is the way I think that the, te the technology is going. And um, I, th I, I think, I think we need to jump on it and, and we got to start somewhere with the learning curve and with clients and customers and whatever, whatever we want to call them, students. Um, and so there's going to be an upfront investment in time with that, that learning, that learning curve. But, but if we can get past that in the next couple of years, I think a lot of that will start to go away, especially as, as we, as faculty and staff get used um, to using this, if we can get used to using it. So, um, a I've, great never used, I've never used Canvas. I've used Blackboard, not as an administrator, but as a or administrator, but as a student. And it, it does seem super user friendly. If it's similar to Blackboard, I think most people probably wouldn't have a problem with it. Actually, it's way better than Blackboard. Um, Blackboard, um, Blackboard was, was pretty good, um, but Canvas is way better. So um, for, for most students, what, what really comes down to being most the biggest problem for students with Canvas or with any online learning system is if if the course is developed properly, there's usually no problems. If it's clear, if they can see the content, it's it's outlined very, very succinctly, this is what I need to go or do, and this is where I need to go to do it. Um, there's usually very, very little problems as far as navigation through the site goes. So a lot of that is actually, if there are problems, honestly, a lot of it is actually our problem from a design standpoint. And that's why for the credit classes, um, all, all online courses have to be approved by um, a course designer before they can be published. And they recommend working with a course designer for, through every stage of course development, which, which I did because I just, I just wanted somebody to hold my hand. But um, because that, that, that navigation is really, really important to having a positive classroom experience. So, so to some extent, we can just throw stuff on there, but it needs to be organized in a logical way. And, and that, that's, that's where we'll save most of our problems. You know, one potential application I could see too, I mean, it certainly would work with the Master Gardener program, but it could possibly work with some other things too, is sometimes we do have volunteers that have just sort of stayed in the system for years and years, and maybe they took the Master Gardener class, you know, back in the 1980s or whatever. Um, I can almost see this being used a little bit as like kind of a continuing education unit sort of thing where they're able to go in and sort of do a refresher and help to get up to date on what it is we'd like for them to be, um, helping share with the public um, and you know they probably would like it too we I I don't do master gardener in Salt Lake County anymore when I did I always had older students that wanted to come in and audit the class or something like that or you know they try to sit down at the help desk and they feel incredibly uncomfortable because they don't feel like they have the knowledge base to be able to appropriately answer people's questions so this could be possibly an avenue to help them kind of get up to date on what it is that we'd like for them to be you know saying to the, the folks out there when they're calling in with questions and stuff. Yeah, that's great. I actually, I actually hadn't even thought of its potential as, as, as being a continuing education platform. And see, this is where the dialogue for me, I'm, I'm just learning this. So, um, yeah, and, and actually this would be a super way, you know, if, you, if you've got a full class, but you've got some older master gardeners that want to audit, uh, there, it's unlimited space online. If, if we can, if we take our lectures and record them, 
uh, and can post them to Canvas and say, you know, give me, you make sure I got your right email. I'll send you a link. You can get into Canvas. You can watch all of our our classes. You can see some of the labs. You can see the, those things and get up to speed or audit that through an online platform and not actually take up a seat for the current class. So that's a great idea, and I, I can see that definitely um, being a, a good possibility. Any other questions or comments? Any other potential uses? Um, Idea-wise. Hi, this is Caressa from Salt Lake Extension. I just have a question uh, regarding the the use for uh, what we have is an online home buyer course, and um, I've been told from Robert Holloway in IT that it was created using Adobe Flash, which was he said was it's difficult to update the those files. And so he suggested that um, we we look at using Qualtrics, um, and I don't know if if that is something that's similar to uh, Canvas. That maybe we could use uh, Canvas to implement our online home buyer course. Um, yeah, there's um, there's different ways I can see that working different ways. I'm not a Flash expert, and I. And Qualtrics, um, I'm not familiar with Qualtrics at all, but my understanding of that is it's more, it, it's more of a platform for gathering um, so like survey information and stuff, data management. So I'm not exactly sure on that. Um, uh, but depending on how they're written in Flash, um, one thing that that is possible to do is to is to record those, um, and and post them as like an mp4 file or something like that that's that's a possibility um, the other thing too that, that we can do in canvas is link to external sources so if those flash files are already on a server somewhere and you don't want to reinvent that that's fine that's totally fine um, we build the, you build the course page in canvas and then we just simply say like um, you know, under under one of these links, whatever it is, master plan list in this case I'm clicking on, we just post a link to that to say, okay, click here for um, the first part of of the home buyers course. Click here for part two of, of week one or whatever it is, and then it takes them to that external site where the flash is already running, and then they can open that up on a new tab in their in their browser, say Firefox or Chrome or whatever it is. And then and it runs and it will run Flash just fine. So we wouldn't necessarily have to reinvent that. If it needs updating anyway, maybe that's a, this is this would be a good time to re redo that in a different format. But um, you could use the Flash format just fine by linking to it externally. So it, not everything has to be incorporated into Canvas. We can link to YouTube videos without having to actually embed them. Um, we find that it. It's best to embed those if we have the, the raw files. Um, it's best to embed them where possible, just simply because then we have control over those and what happens to them. But if somebody moves a YouTube file that we've linked to, that link's broken. But if, but if we actually uh, embed the file in Canvas and put it on UEN server, then we have complete control over that. We can move it, we can delete it, we can rename it, we can update it, whatever we want, and it's really easy. So there's lots of ways, I think, to go about that particular example. But to me, the easiest right off the cuff would probably be, for now, just to link to it um, and um, just build build the course around that. OK, thank you. And uh -huh. is there going to be um, instruction later on how to, to do that? Or who could we contact to help us to do that? Um, that's a good question. Um, I don't have a firm answer for you on that. Um, because we're just we're kind of pioneering um, this. So yes, there's tons of support out there, um, but but you know we'll need to. Uh, and I, I'm I'm going to be the lead person on this and working with um, Diane and Brian and the folks at City to to see if we can get set up a core group of people that will work with extensions. Because right now all the designers and stuff are pretty well. Um, they have assignments to work with all of the credit classes. There's there's no official real connections to using Canvas with extension. So, but but uh, I'm trying to change that right now. Tyler Clare um, at City 
is the guy that um, I've been working with, and I think I, I mentioned his name on the PowerPoint, and I can go back to that PowerPoint here as well. Let me switch it over. Mike Scott here. Yeah, go ahead, Scott. Yeah, please chime in. Yeah, we met. We met. Uh, my team met with John Louvier uh, yesterday. He's the city guy that uh, pretty much heads up the Canvas program. And they're going to do a training for us at annual conference in March, just an overview training. And they provide training courses uh, on campus, and they've offered to provide at some point in the future a training course via IVC to get people up to speed on the Canvas program. So we're working on getting some, uh, some of my staff trained so that they can be like it's a train-the-trainer type thing, uh, so that they can understand the nuts and bolts of the background system of Canvas, and they can help our team out in the field uh, set these programs up. So we're working on getting training in place. Uh, the first overview will be at annual conference. Perfect. So thank you. I'm glad, yeah, I'm glad you're online there to kind of help me out with that because, you know, we're still trying to figure this out, and I'm just super excited to be part of this, and I feel like my background with RCDE um, is really valuable to help kind of give this a shot in the arm because I, I think this can be so helpful for me in extension and honestly uh, for a lot of others as well. So it won't be long, especially once we can get some training, like Scott's saying, some training um, from city themselves. It won't be long before um, I'm over my head. You know, it'll reach the limit of what I know um, and, and all of the, the different possibilities. So I, I'm not that, that programming expert but I, but I have quite a bit of experience with this, and I'm excited to help anybody um, through with it and, um, you know, kickstart this, um, kick this off and, and head up a, a development committee or whatever we want to do to um, ensure quality um, programs through this method. Um, I think there, there could be the potential, um, you know, for abuse and stuff that may not represent the university well, and, and I don't want to see that happen either. But um, so right here, I put um, up on the screen. So I've worked with um, Tyler Clare um, so far, and, and he's been good. So I've emailed him and said, can you create a course for me for Utah County Master Gardener so I can start building that? Um, and he, sa and he, he says, OK, I created the course for you. He has my A number. He puts me in as an instructor. And then from there, I can actually go and add whoever I want. So I'm going to just show you that. Now the last thing, how do we add people? Um, how can we get students in there uh, admitted to that when they don't have an A number? Um, and then um, I'll just field whatever questions are left and then we'll just uh, um, be done. But um, I know we scheduled two hours for this, but I wasn't sure how long exactly this would take. So hopefully if we don't use the whole time, that's still okay. Um, so, oh, and then I'll, sh I'll show you the support screens first. Let's do support first. So um, if you click on this link up here that says support, you can see the support resources for Canvas. And I got to switch screens. I'm still not used to that. Sorry. There we go. Hey, Mark, so you Scott click, here again. Yeah. Mark, go I just ahead. wanted to add. I just wanted to add that uh, John stated that he would actually set us up with a Utah State University Extension Canvas template so that all of our non-credit programs would have a similar look and feel and distinct from and different from RCDE Canvas programs. And uh, they promised that that would be available shortly after the first year. So anything that's set up now, my understanding is, can be transferred over to our new template fairly easy with a drag and drop type uh, technique. Okay, perfect. Uh, yeah, because so what you guys see on the screen right now is, is you know, RCDE's version of it. And there's probably some things that don't apply to extension. So that'll be good to have, um, yeah, to have that template and create some unity um, between between our, our off-campus courses. So I'm excited to see it getting this far, honestly. Um, so as far as um, support goes, too, and more of that will be ongoing, but um, there are there is this support link up here that's, you know, orientation for students. For instructors, technical support, and this, uh, some of this responsibility for technical support goes to the USU IT Service Desk. And some of it actually goes directly to Instructure uh, in Salt Lake. So they actually have devoted um, a significant portion of their staff 
um, to actually dealing directly with um, instructor IT um, management issues. They're very committed to, to, to seeing this work. Uh, excuse me, so um, if I click on uh, Canvas orientation for instructors just to show you, and I'm, I'm assuming then that based on what Scott's been saying that um, this will be um, added to. Um, so this is, a, this is a Canvas course that, that actually um, will let you go through these different uh, modules, the Canvas interface, add course content, rich content editor, all these things you can go through and just watch a few minute video on how to do it. Um, another one is the, the website, the um, Academic Resource Center uh, online, and I, I'm sorry I didn't show you where to get to that one. If you go right here and click on Academic Resource Center under the support link, um, that will take you to that page, and you can see um, over here on the left side, there's tips and tricks using Canvas, um, Canvas system requirements, all of those kinds of things are there. Uh, and then your Academic Resource Center um, as well, which may not apply that much to, I'm used to using that, but it may not apply that much to us off campus. So there's lots of, of technical support, um, videos, those kind of things to help you learn how to do it. Plus, um, sounds like that we're going to get kind of into the pipeline of normal um, uh, trainings by city, which will, which will be tremendous. And I know that they've done broadcast trainings in the past because I was um, involved in some of those. So um, I know that they have a lot of experience in that. So, um, and then uh, the last thing I was going to do was just show you um, how we add people to a, to a course. So I'm actually going to go out of this course and into my Utah County Master Gardener um, class. So um, you see that I'm enrolled as a teacher. And this is what I've, I've put together so far for my U Utah County Master Gardener class. So, I've linked to some information on using Canvas, so again, to help those new learners to, to kind of get used to using this interface. I've put our Master Gardener mission statement here, the class syllabus, um, information about our um, Master Gardener Advisory Council, um, information about the faculty uh, here in Utah County, and then information um, about uh, volunteering. And then you can see that I've also got our class schedule outlined here and the course chapters that, that go along with that, so they can have a digital um, copy of that file um, as well. Uh, so, but if we go into people um, and click on the people link on the left, uh, we can add people. Now you can see here that, that I've actually added, um, so Gretchen Campbell is here at Thanksgiving Point um, to help with um, the classes that Thanksgiving Point teaches, but she helps us with Master Gardeners. So I added her to this course uh, as a TA to help us manage content on this. And so I actually sent her an email at gcampbell at thanksgivingpoint.org. Um, she replied to that, went through the login information, and now um, her login ID is her email, and she has access to um, work in the course as a TA. So she can't, she can't change content, but she can help with grading and announcements and discussions and those kinds of things. So if I want to add people, I just, I just go up here to the upper right and I click on Add People. And it says, um, type or paste a list of A numbers below. Um, but in fact, I don't have to type in an A number necessarily. I can just type in uh, an email. So there's my personal email. I type that in. Um, and then I, if I would then click Next, um, it's, it says it's ready to add one user. And I can go in and click Add User. Then I'll get an email, my personal email, saying you've been invited to join. Utah County Master Gardener class, click to accept this, click this link to accept, and it takes me to a page where I can go through that. So now I don't want to do that because I've already done that. But And then I also have the opportunity to add, so I can put myself in as a student, I can invite that person to be a teacher, a TA, a designer, or just an observer, somebody who has access to the class, but they, they can't make comments or anything like that. They can just look and see um, what the class is doing and what's been put on um, the class. So there's lots of lots of options there. And then whatever um, also you have um, control over as far as courses, you can put them in a different class. So uh, what we're doing in, in Utah County is since we're offering classes in both Provo and at Thanksgiving Point on opposite ends of the county, um, we're going to um, just have the class um, sectioned into the Provo and the Thanksgiving Point group just for regional um, announcements. But then we can um, assign them to be in Provo or Thanksgiving Point, but they're all in this one class. So they'll all show up under one master list. We're not trying to segregate them into two separate classes. It just lets us say, 
this is a person that registered through the Provo um, Center and they're taking cla their class in Provo and this person's taking it at Thanksgiving point and they're at different times. So it's just a way to help us organize the people that are gonna be in here and we'll potentially have 100 people or so in here. So for me, it's useful to know kind of where um, these different people are taking the class. So um, that's, that's basically how we, we do that. Um, and so that avoids us having to have the whole A number uh, thing. As long as we have an email, we're good. So um, really, as far as the content that I had kind of thought that I would go over, that's it. Um, just really an introduction and to kind of get you thinking about uh, ways that we might be able to use this in extension. And, and really, uh, I'm just kind of a, hopefully a, an idea starter for you on this. And, and I definitely want to help if anybody needs help or has questions uh, in the interim till we can get some more formal things going on. I'm happy to do that and look at the possibilities with you. Um, on that. So if, is there any other questions or comments, concerns about this? Hey, Mike, I was also just going to say it might be a tool in which we could um, kind of work on sort of educating each other in our various areas of expertise. If, you know, if I'm trying to put together a course in greenhouse management or something like that, I mean, that's something I've would you know be a little nervous taking on if i was able to maybe you know take some tutorial from something that you had put together to get some ideas in terms of where i should turn for resources and you know what are the key concepts and things like that i wonder if it could also be an application that way I'm just sure. thinking you know instead of us traveling all over the place all the time and and um trying to be a little bit more self-sufficient you know um if it might be a way that we could kind of we could work work through this through, through this um, as well to, to accomplish that. I don't know what your thoughts are on that or if you've seen that done before. Um, I, I've only seen it done um, really through the Canvas, uh, through City, um, using it. Um, so um, they've a they actually built Canvas courses to teach you how to use Canvas. So kind of along those lines, and then they, they basically give everybody with an A number access to it in this case. Um, so, so they're using it for in-service in that way. So I don't see any reason why uh, Extension couldn't use this as a tool for for in-service training, those kinds of things. Um, we also have the you know the IVC system um, that that we can use as well, and and, uh, and to tie into that. Um, so yeah, using Canvas can be as formal or as informal as we want, depending on the audience and our needs. So if we're just trying to communicate with each other and set up some some resources that way. Um, then absolutely it can be pretty informal, just list, click on this and you'll get this file kind of a thing. So in that way, we we could use it as a clearinghouse, an internal clearinghouse of information, absolutely. So really the, the possibilities are endless. It's just figuring out what we wanna do and then how do we make that happen. So those are great ideas, Katie, and I'm, I'm excited to hear about them because a lot of these are new ideas for me. I haven't thought of this. So uh, good, any other questions or comments? about this.